Welcome to the New York State Science Test. This video is going to do questions number one through five. Now there is a vocabulary component to each question, so make sure you have your vocabulary sheet in front of you so you can pause the video and fill it out. All right, let's get started with question number one. Which life process is common to all living things? So our choices are reproduction, germination, hunting for food, and pollinating flowers. There are three vocabulary words in there, so let's go ahead and go through them now. To reproduce is to produce new individuals or organisms of the same kind. For example, fish reproduce to make more fish. To germinate, when a new plant breaks out of the seed. And pollination, the transfer of pollen to allow fertilization. So, now that we've gone through that vocabulary, which life process is common to all living things? Well, it's a pretty good question. Let's go ahead and go through each answer one by one. So, is reproduction common to all living things? Maybe. Germination? Well, people certainly don't germinate, so that's out. Hunting for food? Plants don't hunt for food. That's out. Pollinating flowers? Again, just think about us. People don't pollinate flowers. So our answer, the only one left, is reproduction. All living things must reproduce or else the species would die out. Okay, very good. Let's go to question number two. A skunk's odor is unpleasant to other animals. A monarch butterfly's coloration warns birds of its bitter taste. These adaptations help these animals to do what? Well, we have some more vocabulary with question number two. So let's go ahead and check it out before we try to answer this question. Adaptation is a structure of behavior that enables an organism to survive in its environment. Okay, by defining adaptation, it really helps us to understand this question. So again, these adaptations help these animals to find water. Well, a skunk being smelly certainly does not help an animal find water. That's out. Does it help them find prey? So by finding prey, that means it helps them to hunt, right? Does an animal being stinky help it hunt? Probably the exact opposite, right? So that's out. Does it help it find shelter, right? So shelter is like your home. Does a skunk being smelly help an animal find its home? Nah. What about letter D? Does it help it avoid predators? So if I'm trying to find a skunk and I find it and it lets out this horrible stinky odor, I'm probably going to stop chasing it, right? That helps the skunk avoid its predator. Okay, same with the monarch butterfly. If it tastes terrible, I'm not going to try to eat it, right? So our answer is D, avoid predators. Let's move on to number three. The diagram below shows a polar bear that lives in a cold, snowy environment. Four of the polar bear's body structures have been labeled. So we have a rough tongue, white fur, a short tail, and strong legs. The question is, which body structure provides camouflage for the polar bear in its environment. Well, I see some more vocabulary. Let's go through those first before we answer the question. Camouflage is the process of animals changing their colors, patterns, and shapes to disguise them from predators or prey. Environment are the things, both living and non-living, surrounding the living thing. Okay, now that we know what camouflage is and what an environment is, we can certainly answer this question, okay? Which one provides camouflage? So the tongue you can't even see. That certainly doesn't help it blend in, right? So it's not camouflaged, all right? So it's not A. What about strong legs? Well, whether the bear has strong legs or weak legs does not help it camouflage, right? I can still see it whether the legs are strong or weak. A short tail? Well, I guess a short tail is harder to see, but it doesn't make like the whole bear disappear, right? Our real answer is D, white fur. If the bear is in a snowy environment where everything is white, right, white fur will help it blend into its environment or be camouflaged. Very good. It's the same with a, a brown bear in the forest, right? If it were a white bear in the forest, it would stand out like, oh, look at that bear, I see it. It's white and everything else is brown or green. Whereas a brown bear in the forest kind of blends in with the trees and the dirt. Okay, It depends on the color of the animal's fur and the color of the environment behind it. Okay, 
Let's go on to number four. When the food supply in an area decreases, many of the deer living there will do what? Okay, again, with these choices, we have moved to a new habitat, change their color, hibernate and reproduce. We have some vocabulary. Let's go through it now. To hibernate is when animals go into a deep sleep. Okay, welcome back. So now we know what hibernate means, all right? So if there's less food in an area, what might a deer do? Might they move to a new habitat, a new area? Maybe, let's put a check mark by that for now. Uh, will they change their color? So if they're out of food, does being a different color help you? No, you're still gonna be hungry. Uh, might they hibernate? Uh, I guess a deer, like if they're out of food, they could go to sleep, right? Like uh, bears, for example, during the winter time when there's less food available, they do hibernate. So that's possible as well. Um, do they reproduce? So if you've got no food, does it make sense to bring another life into the world? Another mouth you have to feed? No, that doesn't make any sense at all. All right, so here we're left with two choices. All right, this is a great example of us where we've narrowed down our answers, but we don't know exactly what the answer is. So now we have to pick between our two best answers. So let's try to do that now. So which one makes more sense? A deer moving to a new habitat to find food or a deer hibernating? Well, first of all, if you know anything about deer, you know that they do not hibernate, right? So we know the answer is not C, right? It's very, very uh, rare to find an animal that hibernates. Really the only ones we ever think of are bears. Okay, so our answer is A, a deer moving to a new habitat. All right, last one in this video, question number five. The diagram below shows the growth and development of an oak tree. Okay, so we have what? A seedling, a young tree, an adult tree, and an acorn. All right, so basically we start with anywhere in this map, all right? The seed, the acorn, turns into a seedling turns into a young tree, turns into an adult tree, and they drop an acorn, and we start all over again, okay? So they wanna know, this is an example of what? What does this diagram show us? Is it a lifespan, life cycle, food chain, or food supply? Well, of course, there's more vocabulary here, so let's go through it now. A life cycle are the stages of development in a living thing. A lifespan is the duration of existence of an individual. And a food chain is the path of food from one living thing to another. Okay, welcome back. So let's go through these answers one by one and see if we can eliminate anything. So a lifespan. What was a lifespan again? It was the duration of existence of an individual. So you can call like a tree an individual. Does this show how long it lives? Not really, but I'm not prepared to cross it off yet. A life cycle. What was a life cycle again? Let's check it out. The exact definition. A life cycle is the stages of development. Well, this certainly shows the stages of development. I like that answer a lot. Okay. The food chain. Uh, there's no food chain here, right? A food chain is where you have like a, um, a cricket that's eaten by a fish that's eaten by a shark, right? That's more like a food chain. So that's out. Food supply. There's no food supply here again. There's no food. So again, lifespan shows how long something lives, right? Usually it's a comparison between like how long a person lives or a dog or a fish, but that's not really what we have here. We have a life cycle showing the different stages of development. So our answer is B. Okay, I hope those explanations helped. Uh, in the next video, we will do questions six through 10. See you there, bye. David is 10 years old. He lives in New York City. David likes school, but he's nervous about the fourth grade state test. David's mom and dad are worried, but what should they do? For many students, just like David, online courses are the perfect solution. This course is the best online resource available for the 2019 New York State test. Your instructor will guide you through every problem released from the 2018 test. This includes all 30 math questions, 45 science questions, and five ELA passages. You'll learn how to answer multiple choice, short response, and even essay questions.
Students like David will be more confident, better prepared, and less stressed about the state tests. Sign up today and watch your child excel on test day.